What's going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with his co-host and co-coach, KG, and I'm in the podcast garage. Yeah, Kyle's putting a lot of work in this space ready, even though it's not fully ready, like literally this entire wall that you can't see beside me was gone. He made it all nice. He's got like the most bougie, uh, like mudding job done on the tri wall. Like this is done as nice as inside of a house and it's gonna be a sick podcast space as it develops. And it'll be nice to have more of a dedicated space. And obviously there's some things we're gonna work out like some soundproofing and there's a very empty background behind me. There'll be uh, something more exciting in the near future, but we're definitely excited to have uh, more of a dedicated space. And Kyle's put a lot of work getting it ready to this point. Yeah, even just when I was talking to some people that were helping me out, they're like, well, you know, I'm going to start filming in here. I was like fully insulated, make it nice and solid. I'll probably get a little heater. So it's it's fun. Like it, it's exciting to have a nice space. But one of the biggest things we've learned over the years before we jump into it is just like, no matter where you're at, just use whatever you can. Like even I'll never forget 10 years ago, or I guess we haven't been filming podcasts for 10 years, but even YouTube videos, but podcasts five years ago, I'd, we'd be sitting in the car. I'll never forget this moment filming because we didn't have a space in the middle of winter. We'd turn the heat on as much as we can but then we turn it off so people couldn't hear it during the podcasts we just make it work and i see so many people being like well i need the perfect iphone the perfect camera the best scenario and i just say figure it out like of course we want it to be amazing and it will be but we're here to show up and give value and uh yeah let's uh let's keep going yeah and it's like a process right you can't if we waited till it was everything was perfect and it was the most best setup ever it would never happen and it will get to that point it's good to progressively let that happen and we've checked made sure the audio was really good and really just focused on what is the most important but even previously from being in my dining room it was lots of an exciting atmosphere even kyle you can see we got the discipline equals freedom banner behind them so a lot of exciting stuff and if you're not watching us on video you can do that on youtube uh, that's pretty much the only place it is available on youtube as of now i know spotify has some ability to also be video and that's definitely something we'd like to figure out in the future um, but if you want to check that out see what we're up to on video we have a link in the bio to our actual channel for the podcast and you can see some extra goodies on there we put some visuals you can see our expressions and if you just like watching video with the podcast this is an amazing way to do it but with all that said this is motivation monday we're here to get you inspired to get you fired up and as always we like to start it off with some killer quotes so this week my quote is something i actually made up and uh uh, I really liked it. I came across something saying like what the odds were in being born. So I came up with this fun little one. The odds of you being born are one in 400 trillion. And yet with those incredibly low odds, you are here. That's something worth being grateful for coach KG. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know there's always times where things get challenging. You know, we have these mental battles of just like kind of a lot going on. And just like, anytime I think of that, I'm like, man, it is so true. Like, I'm definitely so grateful just to be here, to be on camera, to be talking to you awesome people, to have an incredibly blessed life. And gratitude is everything. I honestly believe that it can transform so many things and you can never be angry and grateful at the exact same time. So when you express more gratitude for the smaller things, and I'm sure a lot of people haven't even thought of just the fact that you're actually here, present, listening to this, like living an amazing life when like, you know, it's just the odds are so, so, so low. So just want to share that on this amazing Monday. Be grateful, spend time thinking about it. And I guarantee your mindset can change in so many different ways. Yeah, that's why I love practicing gratitude in general, because when you sit there and you think, what am I grateful for? You can always just start with the fact that you woke up in the morning because while well, you woke up, a lot of people didn't. The fact that you woke up healthy, that you're able to breathe, that you're able to have opportunity, that you're in a place hopefully that's free, that you're able to just live your life and not be like under constant like fear. And I just think it's a really good reminder to appreciate that. And when you do take that into account, it's a lot more motivating to get out there and do big things and to kind of cash in on the amazing opportunity that you have in your life. And you might even say, well, my opportunity sucks because X, Y, and Z, but that's where the comparison game is a zero sum game. Someone will always have it worse. Someone will always have it way better, but you'll always have it exactly how you have it. And that's why you gotta just take that opportunity to live your best life and to work with what you have available. So definitely love that. And I think that is incredibly well said. My quote is from Mike Tyson and I just, it hit me today. So his quote was, you got to be the champion 
before you become the champion. And what I loved about this is there's just so many when then statements. It's like when I have a six pack, then I'll be really happy and healthy in my body. I'm gonna take my shirt off at the beach, all these different things. But I like this quote because if you want to be the super fit person, a strong person, a healthy person, like you have to do that work. You have to win those small battles. And this is something I've been challenging my clients with. Like if you wanna be someone who's lost a hundred pounds from day one, when you're a hundred pounds heavier, you have to do the action of someone that will lose a hundred pounds. So you have to be that champion before you become that champion. And in those moments, oftentimes that's where people will say they want to lose 100 pounds, it'll be inconvenient for them to get their food or they won't be able to cook at home. And they'll go, okay, well, it was impossible. So I just ate out and ate a bunch of junk. But it's in those moments you need to be stronger and you need to say, what would that person that's lost 100 pounds, what would they do in this situation? And when you can put yourself already with the mindset of where you want to be and when you can level up your attitude towards it, you can't expect to snap your fingers and just be at that final product. Like it's a process of a journey, but the more you can internalize that and put in that work, you will inevitably get there. And going on top of that, I just finished uh, Alex Hermosi's new book and he ended his book. It's not really so much a spoiler because it's a self-development book, but he finished his book with, you can never beat someone who doesn't quit. He, and he used an example of like there being two die. I'll simplify his example, but there was a die with like six sides and there was a die with 200 sides. And it was like, there were certain odds to you rolling something. And if you told people to play the game, but they didn't know which die they had and they got worse results in one person, they'd say, oh, I had the worst die, so it doesn't work for me. When in reality, they could have the better die, they could just be more unlucky. The other person could have just played a hundred more times. And that's why you can't beat the person who keeps showing up, who keeps having that desire to do more. And fitness is very much the same way. If you're losing weight, it's going great, amazing. The second it gets hard and you deviate from that, it's like, okay, can you like adjust? Can you like analyze what happened? Can you move forward from it? If you come across an obstacle in the gym, you're not seeing progress, how can you break through that? And just that attitude of saying like, I'm gonna be the champion in any circumstance. I'm gonna find a way to get it done. I'm gonna hold my goals in high regard. I'm not gonna sell myself short of my potential. And that's how ultimately you get to that end result. But it's just so easy for people to wanna to go to like zero, right to 100 with nothing in between. It's funny Josh brought that up because even this morning I was looking through uh, the book and I, I have a photo that I took from my camera roll and uh, it pretty much says something along the lines of it takes let's say 20-ish hours of deep focused work to become really good at something but most people don't make it past the first hour or two. Uh, it was something along the lines of that and what I got from that was just really like just keep showing up, keep dedicating that time, keep putting in that work. I know I was saying it last week along with my quote but it is absolutely incredible what you can accomplish and I thought that was very well said and uh, applicable for a lot of you probably. 110% and now we're going to go ahead and get into our thoughts portion of this podcast. So what do you got Kyle? So it's kind of funny because uh, about a week or two when we posted a podcast episode, I went to go check the stats. I was uploading one of our episodes and one of the numbers was just lagging. It wasn't working and I didn't realize until after. It was just showcasing a really low number that we're not used to. And so essentially... I just looked at it. I was like, eh, that's okay. Maybe people didn't like it. That's fine. Let's plan another one. Let's keep going. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I relate this to a lot of people's fitness journey where when something happens, such as a bad way in some sort of circumstance that, you know, maybe an injury, a setback, most people will use that and just say, well, I might as well give up. It's a calling. And you just really have to have that deeper why. So for us with the podcast, there's so many reasons I do this. I love doing it no matter what the numbers are. I know we're having an impact. I love seeing you guys reacting now to the uh, Spotify. I was reading through all the comments as well. And I have a, such a deep why that nothing will stop me. And I think if you can replicate that for your fitness journey and figure out what it is that you're doing, why you're doing it. So whenever something happens, such as, you know, here is a low view count, which actually wasn't low. It ended up fixing. It said there was some sort of malfunction and it wasn't calculating, but how can you sit down and figure out that? that deep why that whenever something happens, nothing stops you. You're absolutely unbreakable. And I just wanted to share that because I can definitely apply that to the fitness journey. Even some people, they create social media, they post these reels and they're like, man, I'm going to get thousands of views. They get a hundred. Well, they stop, right? Like that's just such a quitter mentality. And I really want you to think bigger, think deeper, and it'll help you a lot for sure. Yeah. It was interesting when Kyle shared these stats because 
even with the podcast, my attitude from the start, it was so easy to want huge, crazy numbers from the get-go because our YouTube was really, really doing well at the time. And that's where we're putting bulk of our effort. But I'm like, I could see a podcast being a really good solution because a YouTube video, I could make on one theme, I can demonstrate different things, but a podcast is just so fun because you can casually talk and really just kind of work through different topics. And it's just like a little bit more of a loose format. You don't have to have like that YouTube voice and be super, super eccentric and all those different things. And even for us, like it'll be really nice, even with a better space to be able to have more opportunity to get more guests either in person to get them virtually to really just build in and around that. And it's all about those baby steps, like massive transformations are always done like from the start. And something I'm always telling my clients is like, it's so easy to downplay the tiny components of the journey, but like they're ultimately what make the difference. Like if you're really, I I'd love to think of a good analogy, but I can't even, but if you want to lose weight, like you have to actually make sure you're eating in a deficit. You're not having crazy days where you deviate from that plan. You're getting in the gym, you're tracking your data, you're progressively challenging yourself to go in the right direction. And as long as you do those boring things, you will see change. It's just so easy to try to make it into something bigger unnecessarily and be so fixated that you're taking the right supplements that you're eating all the right superfoods and like the reality is if you deter from the core of what makes the difference you're going to go away from it and similarly when we we're like doing really big on youtube people would always say I want to make a YouTube channel. I'm going to make a YouTube channel and be like, okay, sure. And they'd be like, but I want the right setting. I need the right theme. I need the right name. I need to make sure I have all my merch ready in advance. And we're like, just make it, just upload a YouTube video. Like you can't actually like just completely hesitate so far. And like they say it's paralysis by analysis. And it's like that with everything. And with fitness too, I know so many people that are want to get in shape, but they're like, oh, my circumstances aren't good. So I'll do it in the future. And I see them in a few years and they're like, yeah, more things popped up. But if you just said, okay, I want to get in shape. And even today, like I never move, I'm going to go on a 15 minute walk. You'd actually be doing something and you'd have a start and you'd be able to push past that and grow. So I think that is just absolutely incredibly, incredibly well said. Uh, anything else you want to add there? One other thing that I was thinking of in the sauna yesterday, I, always, I get so many random thoughts. It's funny. I have to rush right out, especially when I'm by myself, because usually I'm not talking, I'm just chilling and thinking. Um, and then I just go right down on my phone. But I was thinking about how, once again, today is a lot about grateful, uh, gratefulness, gratitude, but just how grateful I am for the gym. And what I'm trying to get at here is that you don't realize what you have until it's gone. So years ago, when gyms got shut down, when we had nothing, I kind of felt like I took it for granted because you don't really think about it day to day, like how amazing it is to be able to go into an amazing space. And so I think it's a good reminder for anyone who does struggle to you know, even just work out or go to the gym or whatever. Cause I guarantee you when it's taken away, you just, you really start to miss it. And that goes for nutrition as well. I was thinking sometimes people struggle to eat healthy, but I'm willing to bet you if you were forced to eat nothing but garbage, fast food, all this stuff, like after a day or two, like 95, 99% of people, there'll be a small portion who love it. But most people will say, I'm craving something so healthy. I want healthy food. I want veggies. I want multi, you know, um, amazing stuff, you know, micronutrients. And so having that perspective of like, wow, like this is awesome. You know, I, you don't realize what you have until it's gone. So I just thought about that. I love going to the gym. I was thinking of uh, when we had to make shift a gym in Josh's basement and it was great. Like we got a workout in, but it's just so amazing to get out there, to connect with people, to meet people and definitely very grateful for it. I think that can help you out. Yeah, even adding on top of that, something that's been on my mind is being perspective. Obviously, I'm doing my book challenge. I'm trying to do 52 books in a year. Looks like I should be able to get that done. So I'll update more as I get towards the end of it. Perhaps I can do a really good episode on my best takeaways and advice from that. So that'll be really exciting. But I started listening to a book called Hidden Potential, I believe, by Adam Grant. And he had mentioned how you can completely eliminate burnout like they've done studies where you can actually really minimize burnout and activities by changing your perspective towards it and he used the example of like instead of saying i have to study to i get to learn something new today and it actually alleviated a lot of that burnout and that mundaneness of the journey and i just thought this was relevant because even for me instead of saying i have to go to the gym i really pushed that like i get to go to the gym i really internalize it as like my time I can listen to music i can do breath work i can lift heavy things i can have a physical outlet i can socialize it's a great time to like shower after and like get all ready and kind of reset for the day 
And like even just having that attitude makes it a lot more enjoyable because as we transition into where we are in our journey and what we're struggling with, what we're working on, like for me, there's no massive developments. I'm still trying to do my half a pound a week. Last week I didn't get it, so I had to increase my calories again. But it's just getting in there, doing those hard lifts, eating those good foods. I'm really trying to be optimal with everything too and really just maximize like my eating windows and my timing and just trying to give myself every edge and eliminate every excuse. And of course it can get a little mundane, it can get repetitive. There's weeks where it's less exciting to do, but I think that framework and that mindset by really just enjoying every component of it makes it so much better. And if you're struggling with that right now too, that was definitely just a thought I had and that's pretty much all I have for my journey. Anything you got to add there, Kyle? Yeah, really just showing up, you know, doing the stuff that you know needs to get done. That's kind of where I'm at, my head's down, I'm focused. Uh, we just set a date for when we're testing our maxes, uh, which will be in about two weeks or so. So stay tuned for that. I just, I was talking to Josh today and I was just saying like, uh, it's so easy to just like go in and go through the motions. Like I was saying there was nothing more that I technically wanted, like mentally than just like putting 200 pounds on the bar and just repping it out. So today I put on 335, which is nothing crazy compared to my PR, but it's more weight than I've lifted in a while. And even last week when I got to, um, you know, my 405 deadlifts, which is the first time I've done in a while, it's, I just, I really don't want to be doing it. Um, but honestly, every time I do something hard, I feel like, it makes me such a stronger person. Today we did five sets of four and on the fifth set, I remember just wanting to stop on the second rep and I just thought to myself, what is this gonna leave like for the rest of the day? Like, how is that, what's that gonna do for me? And essentially that would just tell me that taking shortcuts when things are hard is the right thing to do. So I really just try to replicate stuff in the gym, just our overall journey, we can apply it to our life so well. And a lot of people don't realize like how many parallels there are to fitness, to business, to relationships, to life, to everything that's going on. So I always try to think of that stuff and uh, it helps me a lot in the gym for sure. Absolutely. And now we're gonna go ahead and jump into our client shout out. Uh, who do we got this week? So this week we have every single one of our Colossus clients who's absolutely crushing it, who's showing up. You'll see a bunch of different transformations on the screen if you're watching YouTube. Uh, oftentimes I just sit down and I look through our Facebook group. We have so many supportive people. I love when someone comes in and we have a whole community of people saying welcome, so happy to have you. When someone asks a question, our entire community is there right away. Someone will say, hey, I'm traveling to New York this weekend and it's gonna be a tough situation. What do I do, like any tips? People are there for that person. And I'm just so grateful that we've built up such an amazing community. I know today's a lot about gratitude and stuff, but I really am like thinking back to years ago, like 10 years ago, just the thought of wishing we had even just one client that was succeeding. And now we have hundreds and we've had thousands in our coaching journey. I'm just so grateful that people trust us and show up and like, the hardest part is just committing and stepping out of your comfort zone. So for those of you who've taken that leap, who've messaged us or we've messaged you and you got back to us and you said, you know what, I'm gonna trust you. You're absolutely awesome and we appreciate you and we just know that you're putting in the work even though it's challenging. So shout out to every single one of you. And before I forget, we actually right now are looking for five women who wanna get a tight, toned tummy without any restrictive diets that suck the joy out of life, guaranteed. We will guarantee your results, and I promise you, you will be a completely different person. All you have to do is message us with the keyword ready to our Instagram, which is Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T, and we can't wait to change more of your lives. Yeah, I'm so thankful that we've been able to produce so many transformations, and that's why we can, with such confidence, guarantee your transformations. We've been doing this now just about almost 10 years, which is so exciting, and like our goal was to really make transforming <clears throat> is possible for everyone as it can be, whether your situation's insanely busy, you have no time, you have limited access, you've never been fit before, you're an ex-athlete, you're someone who's super elite, like regardless, we've really built a framework that is successful for anyone as long as they come and bring that effort. So as long as you're hungry to change and you wanna become a fitter, healthier, happier person, we will get you there, guaranteed. 
don't miss out don't miss out on this make sure to dm us it because i want this to be your moment where i mentioned before movie star moments where you have a character and they're going along they have a problem but nothing seems to change and all of a sudden something clicks and it just everything's different from there and that's where it really takes off and becomes positive and fitness and health is like that like when you become more fit you just have more energy you have more excitement you have more to enjoy throughout the day and health is the same way and it's just awesome to see yourself improving and becoming better as opposed to going in the wrong direction and if that's something you've been struggling with like now is the time to take advantage and to go ahead and make that change so once again you can go ahead and dm us that uh the keyword ready to us on instagram at colossus fit c-o-l-o-s-s-u-s-f-i-t now we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the mailbag with our first question and this is an exciting one so hey guys i've been listening to your podcast for about a month i've started from the beginning and made my way up to the 200s love listening to you guys i moved to toronto i moved from toronto to vietnam so it's nice to keep connected at home so here's my question my question is how can i tell if you're losing body fat percentage versus muscle without using a caliper so this is a great question, Savio. I appreciate you sharing that. We actually got it through our website to uh, our, our email and uh, I wanted to answer it. And by the way, once again, it is incredible to think that there's someone out there, you know, listening to us from a month ago that's already on episode 200. Like, so grateful. Uh, just, it's, it's incredible whenever I see these messages and stuff. So thank you all for sharing it. Thank you for connecting with us through Spotify, Instagram, DMs, all that great stuff. It's just, it's incredible when I actually do think about it. But so where it gets tough is there's not many true ways. And this is where it gets challenging because when you enter a calorie deficit, you're eating less than you're burning each day. The goal is to minimize muscle loss and maximize fat loss. So let's say if one person loses 10 pounds, but they lose half muscle, half fat, that's not really ideal. Whereas if one person like myself, I say I, I lose 10 pounds, let's say I lose one pound of uh, muscle and nine pounds of fat. That's incredible, right? So the first thing to consider is that typically speaking, when you're eating less than you're burning, you will lose a little bit of muscle. That's just, unless you're on some extra stuff to help you out, steroids and whatnot, it's gonna be very challenging. But of course the goal is to minimize that. And when it comes down to making sure that you're doing things properly, I will say photos and measurements will absolutely be your best friend. Uh, of course, like the biggest thing and most important to consider would be a DEXA scan. Josh and I actually need to book ours for, I guess, next month, right? Yeah. So, you know, we've been monitoring that. We've got our statistics. It's still not 100%, but it's as close as you possibly can be. And I think it was maybe 100 bucks a piece. And it's great for us, like at least two times a year to monitor, to see where we're at, to make sure we're making great progress. Helps with your bone density. You can see what's going on there there, um, your body fat distribution, all that great stuff. But if you don't have access to this, I will say just using photos, using measurements and making sure that when you are entering a deficit, it's not too big of a deficit, but you're also strength training really hard and hitting your protein. That'll be a really good tool to make sure that you're essentially minimizing it. But honestly, photos and measurements can help you so much. There are some scales out there that you can use, but it's really not that accurate. Like I get some messages from clients saying, Hey, there's a scale at my gym. I just tested it out and it can be okay, but it's definitely not something you want to put too much stock in. But if you like how you feel, if you like how you look and you're paying attention to that stuff, your strength is going up, your measurements are good, then your, your chances are you're in a good spot. Yeah, I think Kyle crushed this one and you can never absolutely know how much exact muscle versus fat. Like Kyle said, the best is the visual progress. Next is measurements. Obviously, if your muscles are increasing, your waist is coming down, you're gaining muscle. Um, but most importantly, too, is like, does your effort effort rather match your desired outcome? Because oftentimes people are like, I'm trying to bulk. They'll put on no weight and then they'll be like, oh, I hit up a buffet last night and I'm up six pounds. So my bulk's amazing. I gained six pounds of muscle. And it's like, you probably gained six pounds of like sodium and water. Like, so you really need to be calculated with it. And if you're being really like aggressive in a deficit, you will lose more muscle. If you're losing like two, three, four pounds a week, you're definitely going to lose more muscle as a result of it. But if you're like taking it slow, you're being intelligent, you're getting enough protein to make sure you're maintaining your muscle as possible. You're training hard, you're developing your strength during this time. Like you can be pretty confident that you're putting on muscle. And like Kyle said, using as many different mechanisms as possible to gauge progress. 
the more sure you can be that you are seeing that right change. So I think that's a great point. And I love even the DEXAs because you can refer back to it. They'll show you like how lean different parts of your body are as and then even your total leanness levels. Like if you have indiscrepancies between your body, another good backup is like a bod pod gyms have those. And those are pretty good too. I think they're a lot better than the scales but not as good as a DEXA. And uh, once again, there's a bunch of different mechanisms for this, but I think photos don't lie more than anything. And I think we can tell when we're progressing. Obviously it's hard when we see ourselves in the mirror every day, but you gotta be honest with yourself. Are you putting in the right effort? Are you training hard? Are you training with intention, strength going up? And if so, you're probably likely putting on muscle. So are you at some of that? Yeah, I was just also gonna say like getting an outside look from someone with photos will be game changing because like Josh said, you see yourself consistently, but you know, if, especially as a coach, like when someone sends us photos, we can take a look at every area and just be like, okay, here's how the quads are looking. Uh, here's how, you know, someone's chest, for example, uh, back, whatever it is, like we can see a very different perspective as well. But I will say strength is super important. I'm glad Josh brought that up because if you're someone who's used to squatting two, 300 pounds, let's say for as an example, and you start just just losing all your strength, you're losing three, five pounds a week, like you will be losing a lot of muscle. A good goal should be like anywhere between one and two pounds, but of course it depends on how much you have to lose. And if you're in that range, you should be in a good spot. And the last thing I will say is if you're in a deficit for way too long, you will likely lose too much muscle. Whereas that's why I like to create, hey, here's 12 weeks, here's 16 weeks, we're gonna lose about one to two pounds a week, and then we'll reverse out of it afterwards. That's another thing to consider because if you're dieting for the rest of the year, you're going to lose a lot of muscle and mess up some things. So another thing to consider for sure. Absolutely. And now for our next question, we got have, Hey guys, I've heard so many things on oblique's definition. Weighted Russian twists are bad and make you wider, but you said that's not true. Could you explain more? Assuming a lean body fat percentage. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, there's so many myths out there, uh, and so many different things. And there will be a lot of people who say different things and I've heard it over and over again. I always think that it's done and no one's going to say it, but I'm always surprised. But there's people out there who say deadlifts make your waist bulky, Russian twists, any oblique movements. But the truth is that's just not the case. It honestly just shapes it nicely if you are in a nice calorie deficit, if you're lean, especially uh, similar to this question she had asked, assuming a lean body fat percentage. And honestly, Russian twists are great. Like they're a great you know, rotary movement. Um, I do believe there are a lot of better oblique exercises. We've actually really enjoyed cable wood choppers. That's one thing and you can check it out. We actually have a uh, YouTube video on it and we do it a couple times a week. Um, there's also the landmine oblique twist, which is another great movement that we also enjoy and have a YouTube video for. But the truth is that, you know, you're not exactly going to be shaping your abs. You're not going to be especially adding, um, any size to it. Like, I, I don't know where those things come from. So I think it's important just to be in a nice calorie deficit to get some cardio in, if that's something that you want to incorporate to create a bigger deficit. And then also to make sure your strength training, taking care of your sleep, drinking water, and the most important things versus focusing on these small little things. And this really won't make a difference and you're not in a bad spot for sure. Yeah. Like the leaner you can get, the more definition you'll see. And then obviously like your abs are like any other muscle, you can develop them by working them, um, but you can only see that muscle if it's not covered by a layer of fat. So if you have a ton of fat, you can't say anything, you're gonna really wanna focus on just dieting down, putting in that work so you can see more definition. And if you can see some abs, but they're not as defined or thick or just chiseled as you like, it's a great opportunity to work them, like try and train them like any other muscle, work them close to failure, give them rest, give them proper like periods between working them. Don't just do it every day and you will see development. But like the theory of just making your waist wider, like of course, if you put on muscle, like theoretically it'd be slightly wider to a degree, but it'd be so minuscule, it wouldn't even really be realistic. And if you actually look at like your waist, you're not oftentimes looking at where kind of your obliques are, you're generally looking like a little bit below that more towards like your lower abs, your belly button. So you're still going to have that tapered in look. And this isn't something where I would worry about. And like Kyle said, it's a great movement. You don't do a lot of twisting rotary movements in general in the gym. And I think this is a good one to do, but like Kyle said, there's even some better ones and we've done some episodes on ab training in the past and we highly recommend you check those out as well. Now we're going to get into our last question for today. If I just did a 30 minute workout weightlifting four times a week, is that enough with the right weight lifting? So this is, I want to actually include this because 
This is an interesting one. And what I mean by that is that we get asked a lot of questions whenever on Monday episode, I post and ask me anything when Josh posts one, or sorry, when Josh posted on Monday, I posted later in the week, we've done them. Even just in these comments, so often someone will ask us a question and we really need to know more information. Uh, we need to know what your goals are. And so for example, this specific person, I, I get the question. I get where you're coming from for sure. 30 minutes of working out, you know, you're doing two hours of weightlifting a week. Now there's a lot to consider. And this is what I want to leave you guys with as well. Cause I know a lot of you have questions. We get asked a lot is what are your goals? Um, what are you actually striving for? You know, are you looking to lose? Are you actually looking to gain strength, um, lose muscle, uh, lose fat, build muscle? There's a million different things to consider, but more or less, I see so many people out there preaching like 30 minute workout a day. I see some people saying like three times a week, 30 minutes. Like I see a lot of bold claims and it is definitely appealing for those of you who are limited on time to, you know, hear that you only have to do 20 minute workouts a day for five times a week or whatever it is. But I don't believe that that will produce the most optimal results. And especially for results, for strength training, for building muscle, Progressive overload is very important, especially just to be pushing yourself with enough amount of weight, uh, with a heavy amount of weight, all that stuff. These things need to be considered. Now, if you're looking to just feel good, get a little bit of a burn, maintain and stuff like that, absolutely, that's totally fine. Do that, do some other things and you're totally fine. But the truth is that I do believe you really need to be spending more time in there, even to warm up, to progress, to get to a weight heavy enough, like even today for my squats, to really help push myself. I had to take some time to warm up, to build up and all that stuff. So I would definitely recommend taking some more time if possible and uh, you'll definitely see better results long-term. Yeah, I definitely also recommend just setting the bar higher. Like you're capable of a lot more than you think and you're gonna get more results by putting in more effort and even offsetting like how much setting we do, how immobile will be, how much TV, screen time, all these things like the gym should be a priority. And if you're in there for an hour, that's 1 24th of your day. And that's entirely reasonable in terms of a workload. So I would definitely recommend doing more. Like if it was absolutely all you could do, obviously make do with it, but you'd be surprised by challenging yourself a bit, adapting upwards, pushing yourself, because when you do something harder like that, you're, you're going to acclimate to it. You're going to become stronger. Whereas if you set your bar really low, there's not much maneuverability from there. Of course you could work up from that number, but if you're just consistently doing that, you're often going to be spinning your wheels and you're going to say like, why am I not seeing the progress I want? So I challenge you to think bigger, try and get there some more, really make the most of that time. And like I said, I feel like an hour is a very realistic amount of time. If you take it serious, if it's a priority for you, you'd be able to get in there. Now I know there's exceptions to every rule, um, but I would definitely recommend like allotting and budgeting the right amount of time for that. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We appreciate it as always. If you love this episode, we haven't done this in a while. If you could share it to your Instagram story and tag our Instagram at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T, whatever you're listening to this on and the like top, like there's a dot, dot, dot or settings or whatever, you can just click share. Put that over to your Instagram story. And even if you do this, if one other person in your life sees it, you're going to help inspire them to be just living a fitter, healthier, happier life. If you love our podcast and want to support us, that's going to help us grow. Even if you have two followers, those are two people who might check out the podcast and that would really mean a lot from us. And as long as you tag us, we'll see it and we'll really, really appreciate that. So if you could take two seconds to do that, it'd mean the world. We thank everyone for tuning in today. Peace out.